Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're in the Netherlands in The Hague at the NFE SDN World Forum 2017. I'm talking with Marcus Brunner, who is Head of Standardization at Swisscom. Marcus, great to see you again. Yeah, hi. Uh, we had a very enjoyable evening yesterday at the panel discussion, a couple of beers afterwards, so it's good to see you again in one piece. Um, it's five years, Marcus, since the first NFE white paper was released. In your view, where are we in terms of the viability of the technology itself and the adoption of that technology by CSPs? Yeah, so the viability as such has been proven. So we, we are in the process of, of, of really doing it, commercially doing it. So as the baseline technology has proven and has showed some of the benefits we were expecting, some has not showed up yet. There are actually more things to do, but uh, uh, we are a, on a good way on that. Good. Um, what about the adoption? I mean, you're a, you're a, you're a, a network operator, CSP. What's happening within Swisscom as far as NFE and SDN is concerned? Yeah, there are basically something like three or four projects in the space. Uh, in, in different timelines and so on, yeah. but we as, as Swisscom adopting uh, SDN and we quite, quite heavily, and it's sort of part of the whole transformation we need to do as a, as a CSP. When we have the, uh, the luxury to be not the CSP anymore since quite some time, so we are very big IT oriented company already, so we have a certain degree of know-how in the IT space, now combining that together is sort of makes it easier for us to do certain things, but we are really in, into that. Are you finding any particular problems or surprising things that you didn't expect to come across? Yeah, we were expecting that it goes quicker. Yes. We were not thinking that the, the sort of the IT technology is that far away from our requirements. So we expected that the IT technology is more capable in that sense. So it took more time to build this additional carrier grade features uh, uh, into it. So Was that it a big problem? There's not, it's not a fundamental problem, but the, 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 the products and open source components available, they are uh, just not, not really made for, for carriers. For telecoms. For telecom yeah. oriented use cases, let, let's put it this way. Yeah. That starts from uh, performance, from manageability, from uh, low failure modes and so on and so forth. This whole transformation journey, which seems to be on on course to take about 10 years, and we're sort of halfway through it at the five year point. Ultimately, this is about CSPs being able to deliver a better customer experience. We shouldn't lose sight of that. How are SDN and NFE going to help you to gain the best possible insight into the current and future needs of your customers, who after all, in the end, will be paying for this? Yeah, so I mean, SDN and NFE is first of all, it was really an, a, a customer experience uh, uh, thing. We there, I mean, the first project we did something like two or three years ago, which is uh, a life for now two or three years, it is actually really em enhancing the customer experience in terms of self service, in terms of quicker deployments. The customer can just click and get a service as people are used to from other uh, uh, industries. And sure. so that one sort of works. Yeah. That made it much better. Plus the customer has a certain insight in what's going on uh, in our network on, for his service. Indeed. So that's, that's, that's a good thing as, uh, uh, as well. Where we're lacking a little bit is really getting the, the systems in place to sort of figuring out what the customer really wants in the same system. We still do it that sort of bit separate to it. Can I ask you a bit more detail about sure. that? Do the customers themselves know what they want? Do they think they know what they want? And are you able to provide it? You said it's a bit difficult. Why is it so difficult? Because they don't really know what's going to get, what they can get out of the technology? Yeah, part of it, it's not exactly, uh, uh, the customers don't exactly know what they really want. So we need to sort of offer them examples in that sense. So look, we, you can do X, Y, Z, but that's the good part. I mean, this one we can do relatively easy. I mean, you are on the on your self-service portal and you say you want X, Y, Z and we offer you the, the ABC as well and then some customers take it and try it out, some don't. Yeah. So they, they play a bit with it as well. So that's, that's, that, uh, that's very good. But sort of 
beyond that, yeah. it's, 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 it's a bit difficult. And that you only get out of discussions and basically customer relationship management and talking with customers. And it's not like like automatable in that sense. No, indeed not. But but it's a matter. So it's a matter of discussing with them. Basically, them using using it and finding out what they like and don't like. What they like and don't like, and what they could see as a future feature, uh, uh, things like that. So we have certain customer engagements and try to also co-develop with some of the customers to sort of get their feedback early on in, in, into the, the further development of these this systems. One of the things always in this industry, there's always the next big thing, there's always something new coming along. Now that NFV is five years old, we're starting to hear a lot of talk about, now that NFV is a reality in many places, we hear a lot about AI, about machine learning, and a lot, a lot, a lot about automation. What do you think these mean in the context of network transformation and how important are they going to be in the future? So the, the machine learning, AI thing is, is we have to run that under a big data umbrella. Yep. So it was a challenge to get the data together already. There we, I think we are good, well off uh, in that. Now they are very sort of domain specific projects sort of using AI technologies to make something better from planning tasks to uh, customer experience uh, uh, things, who is using what, when, why uh, uh, type of, of, of figuring out what's going on. So this AI thing is, is going on. Uh, I don't know how much further we can go there to really get uh, 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 a lot more benefits. There's still one or the other benefits we are sure we can, we can, we can do. The automation side, so there we have, we had more hope at the beginning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, if you are in a software world, automation is sort of coming along with it, but we have not really cashed in on the automation part. And that's also why we as Swisscom, we are very interested in cloud native technologies, really going, not virtualization, but cloud ways platform as service technologies and so on and so forth, and then try to automate even more. That sort of to, to, to lower our cost base. It's, it's very, very important for us, the automation part. What has surprised you most, Marcus, over the course of this five-year NFV journey so far? I found it extremely fascinating how the industry that the telecommunication industry sort of was adopting IT principles and working in the telecom side for quite some time with a computer science background I was surprised and I had project early on which this uh, two teams could not even talk to each other but I found it relatively quick that these people got along with each other and got to a common agreement uh, on, on that. I found it pretty surprising. I would not have expected that to happen that fast. <laughs> Good, that's very positive. Now if you could borrow Telecom TV's time machine, we keep it, it looks like a fridge in, in London, okay, uh, and you could change one thing over the past five years, what would it be? Ah, that's a difficult one. I don't... I, I think we could have done a bit better in the sort of, it, there are too many initiatives going on, but it's sort of, I'm used to that this happening. If there is a, a new topic coming along, a big boom happens and everybody tries to find their way in, in, in different initiatives, initiative, different strategies. Um, I think sort of the, for example, the open source and standardization bodies should have collaborated earlier. I mean, there is collaboration ongoing now, but it should have been done much earlier. Uh, but I mean, there's uh, some strategies, some stakeholders and, and, and so on. But it's, I think that would have benefited everybody. I mean, specifically also now in the automation OSS space we talk all about here yeah. uh, is uh, uh, different open source communities around those topics, uh, uh, standardization uh, communities around those topics. And it's a bit of a, a, a rattling and moving uh, 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 there. So I would have loved to see that bit, bit more consolidated. But I mean, I would not, I have not expected it going different, but it's, if, you, if I have a wish free from you, I would, I would do that. <laughs> Prediction in this industry 
is, is foolish because things change so very quickly and I don't believe having spoken to many people over many years about what's going to happen in the next year, two years, three years and everybody is blindsided or taken by surprise by something. So I'm not going to ask you for, to predict but how, where do you think, how do you think the transform networks with NFV, cloudification, SDN, automation, AI, machine learning and all the rest what kind of a state are they going to be in in about five years' time and, and what will they be doing? Because it won't matter, will it? When the network will be the network. It won't matter if it's cellular, mobile, fixed, whatever. No, exactly. I mean, that, I mean, that's the first thing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what is the network. Yeah. Uh, and I believe it, we're going to have really this sort of platform, horizontal way of thinking about the stuff, yeah. not, not vertical anymore. Uh, so having these platforms ready for all types of applications, networked, non-networked, largely networked, yeah. <laughs> lightly networked, <laughs> IoT, yeah. and, 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 and so on. There's a lot of these different requirements and I would love to see that all of that sort of are basically running on this general purpose ICT infrastructure and platform. That's I think what, where, where we're heading towards with all types of vertical and domain specific applications and services running on top of that. Very interesting. Marcus Brunner, as usual, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.